Good evening and welcome to everyone who has joined us here in the sanctuary and those who are online for our Christmas in July celebration. I hope that we have fun this evening. Um, it will be filled with as much song as we can fit into this short service. And I must warn everybody that from this point forward, Time just does nothing but speed up, and we will be back here for Christmas Eve services before we know it. So um, we, for those who are here on site, we will have a time of fellowship and refreshments after the service. So um, if you are able, please join us downstairs for that. I would ask the congregation to stand as you are able, and we will begin our worship together. Hope is a candle that flickers and waves, yet offers warmth and life. The darkness shall turn into light, the moon will shine as bright as the sun. Hope is a hand that reaches out in peace. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid. Hope is a song that grows and fills the world with joy. The wilderness and dry land will be glad. The desert rejoices in bloom. Hope is a promise of a baby to be born in a manger stall. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Shepherd, is coming. The one who is love overflows and fills us with love. The one who brings healing mends our hearts with mercy and compassion. The Prince of Peace comes to bring light and life for all creation. The one who will be born in the manger as a humble, vulnerable baby is the one who will and who has defeated death and the powers of evil, offering to us life and salvation through a gift of abundant grace. These are the gifts of Christmas, the gifts of Easter, the gifts for all time. For all this, we give thanks. Together we will sing our gathering hymn, Joy to the World.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, it, it is, is your, your will, will to hold both heaven, heaven and earth in a single peace. peace. Let the design of your great love shine on the troubles and sorrows of this world and give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us greet the gospel with joy and acclamation. By the light of the Holy Spirit shining in our midst, Open our hearts and minds, O oh God, to your word. Present now and always for the sake of your holy name. Amen. The congregation may be seated. Tonight, we will hear readings from the Gospel of St. Luke from the first and second chapters. A reading from Luke. Since many have undertaken to compile a narrative about the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed on to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the word, I too decided as one having a grasp of everything from the start to write a well-ordered account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may have a firm grasp of the words in which you have been instructed. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. His wife was descended from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children because Elizabeth was barren, and both were getting on in years. Once when he was serving as priest before God during his section's turn of duty, he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to enter the sanctuary of the Lord to offer incense. Now at the time of the incense offering, the whole assembly of the people were praying outside. Then there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified, and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zacharias said to the angel, How can I know this will happen? For I am an old man, and my wife is getting on in years. The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. Word of God, word of life.
A reading from Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered sort, what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here I am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Word of God, word of life.
a reading from Luke, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room in the guest room. Now in that same region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. And Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told them.
is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The prophet Isaiah declares the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. So when some folks heard that we were having this Christmas in July worship, I have been met with equal parts of interest and skepticism. I guess for some, Christmas in July is only to be set aside for mattress store sales and the Hallmark Channel Christmas in July. (laughs) Even in the church, there is a proper time for such things. The church has a carefully defined and prescribed liturgical calendar. There are particular seasons when it is right and proper to do certain things. We are solidly in the green season, ordinary time. Per the calendar, this is not the right time for Advent. And of course, that is true at least where we would expect to find it. But I have to admit that if we can find a reason to sing Christmas carols and have some cookies and look forward to Christmas, I'm willing to use this as a good excuse because there never seems to be enough Sundays for Christmas carols. And besides that, I truly think we have a firm, theological ground on which to stand here today. Five months before we gather for Christmas Eve services, the truth is, it is always Advent. Today, here at the end of July, as we experience these hottest days of the summer, it's good for us to remember that we are a people who are waiting always with vigilance and intention for the coming of Christ. We are a people shaped and formed by the faith that Jesus, the Messiah of God, came to earth by the power of the Holy Spirit to dwell here among us, taking on human flesh, experiencing life as a human being, truly offering to us the gift of the presence of the incarnate one, Emmanuel, God with us. What a gift we were given on that long ago night when Mary gave birth to Jesus, God's son. We are a people shaped and formed by the promise of that same Jesus Christ, that he was sent to this earth for the sake of all the people, for the reconciliation and healing of the world, which would come through his own death. And resurrection. We are a people shaped and formed by the promise that Jesus will come again to bring the fulfillment of God's kingdom, ensuring finally and for all time the restoration of God's aching, ailing, weary world. We are an Advent people, watching and waiting for the coming of the Messiah. We are an Easter people, forgiven and redeemed by the power of the cross and the empty tomb. Both are miracles. Incarnation and salvation always intertwined, mysteriously joined together here on earth, here in human space and time, all for the sake of the beloved, cherished, broken, and suffering humanity. As ordinary time marches forward, I think today is the perfect day to remind ourselves that our faith is founded upon the belief that there is nothing ordinary about this faith which we hold in this world where we live. When we are overwhelmed by all of the things on our to-do list and perhaps 
filled with some anxiety and worry about all the things that seem to be wrong in this world, it is a good time to remind ourselves that we are part of this cosmic story which is guided and directed by the purposes of the great creator. That all of creation, everything that has ever been and everything that ever will be emanates forth from God. This story spans billions of years. God created humanity here on earth. With love and mercy, God sought to live in this community with us. Sin marred the very good plans of God. God gave humanity the ability to choose to live with God in accordance and God's righteousness, with God's intentions for us, gathering us all together. And too often, we human beings said no. Too often we chose the path that leads to brokenness and hardship. And God saw that. God saw this reality playing out and it grieved God. And God lamented, for this was not what God had intended it to be. So God determined the right time to send the Son in mystery and wonder as an infant, vulnerable and fragile into this dangerous world. By divine power and will, Christ was joined in mortal humanity through the willing assent of a young Jewish girl named Mary. By the power of the Holy Spirit, a Savior was sent to live among us, to reveal God to us, to teach us, to lead us, to guide us, to reconcile and redeem us, and call us into the kingdom, into our rightful place as beloved children of God. Jesus came for our sake. Jesus will come again. Jesus has brought salvation. Jesus has brought God near to us. Advent is a time of waiting and preparing. Advent is not a time set aside just for a few cold weeks in December. Advent time forms the very framework of our lives. Let us be ever vigilant, ever waiting, always ready to greet the beloved Son who came to earth. Let us seek him in the manger. Let us dwell with him at the cross. Let us rejoice with him in praise and adoration that the power of God broke forth into this world to defeat all that stands in the way of God's kingdom. Let us give thanks always that the Messiah has come. Let us wait for the Messiah who is coming. Amen. I invite the congregation to stand. We will sing, O come all ye faithful.
Lord, you are with us in the morning. Let our first thoughts and words be a prayer to you. Lord, you are with us in the midday. Keep us mindful of you as we work and play. Lord, you are with us in the evening. Prepare us for the night watches. Lord, you are with us in the night time. We commend our bodies and souls into your care. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. Be our light in the darkness, O God. And in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, all thoughts of truth and peace come from you. Kindle in the hearts of all your children the love of peace and guide us with your wisdom, the leaders of the nations, so that your kingdom will go forth in peace and the earth will be filled with the knowledge of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, by your gracious providence, your servant John the Baptist was born to Elizabeth and Zechariah. Grant to your people the wisdom to see your purpose and the openness to hear your will that the light of Christ may increase in us. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, comfort the afflicted, shield the joyous, all for your love's sake. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. O God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrod, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated. We will worship with our offering. I will say this night, just as a reminder, as, as it's noted in your bulletin, our donations for this evening will be sent to McGuire's Ford um, in sponsorship or help with their um, Toys for Tots program that they hold at Christmas time. If any online wish to make donations as well, you can send your offerings into the church and just make a notation of Toys for Tots and we will get those included.
entrust all of our hopes and fears to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it in heaven. Give us today. May the light of Christ illumine the darkness of this world, binding up that which is broken and returning our hearts to wholeness. May Christ bring light, comfort, and peace to this yearning world. Amen. We sing our sending hymn. People of God, go in peace, go in hope, go in love. Christ is coming. Amen. Thanks be to God.